Hello there, Pixel Pushers. Good morning. This is Sadiq Hussain um, speaking to you actually from Winnick House in Northamptonshire, and I'm here in the um, in the lounge on the second floor, as you can see around. It's a lovely room, and uh, um, we're going to do a, a couple of videos on uh, splitting the elements of an image so that we can treat them differently and more impact be more creative and this particular one is about splitting the foreground from the background nothing new there of course let me just rewind this back and um, we don't need the um we don't need the uh, the titles of course um, and then starting off with an image like that that's quite a dramatic shot with myself in front of a, a huge a drop of a waterfall in Slovenia. Uh, but, you know, the photographer there hasn't paid attention to, and that's me, of course, the photographer hasn't paid attention to um, composition, the rule of thirds on the smack bang in the middle. Um, so we really could do with first looking at the composition, which is easily done with a, with a decent crop. Uh, but also, what can we do with the foreground image as opposed to the background image or vice versa to make the image have more impact? Okay, so let's get going. We'll make this quick and, uh, and we'll see what we can do with this photograph using Affinity Photo. So go to the Crop tool and here I'm going to select one of the options is the original ratio. So I want to keep the original ratio. All I want to do is to take out areas so i'm going to try and put the the face of the main subject in the part of the frame the intersection of the rule of thirds okay so that's much better there a waterfall on that third myself there and we'll just crop there we've done um, videos on the cropping tools many times before so there's no need to go into that in any great depth. So here we're going to um, look at separating the foreground. Before we do that, whenever we crop in Affinity Photo, if you want to, want to make sure that all the data that you've cropped out has gone, you just hover over the, the image, right click and do rasterize and trim. And that the trim part essentially has removed all that data so it's a non-destructive method of um, cropping as opposed to some of the other um, photo editing programs that you can get but nevertheless once we've done that of course we need to select that foreground object now depending on your image you could select foreground or you select background but in this case we'll select foreground and we're going to use the selection brush tool you know that's my favorite um, and it works very well. Now, this particular image, this particular exercise, it's not hypercritical that we get everything spot on. But, of course, if it is crucial to your image that you do do that, then, then make sure you take the time to, like the down here with the laces, you know, you would really get that selection spot on. Okay, but I'm, for the purposes of this video, I don't think we need to, um, but I am going to refine it a little bit, so do a subtraction, uh, reduce the size of the brush. Now, that's always critical, is that, and we'll do a bit of a clean-up exercise later anyway. Okay, so it's not as if we're going to ignore the quality of the selection completely. We're not so here we go I'm just going to push that in because we're subtracting selection now add in selection and the whole of that boot okay so we want to push that back as well so this is the bit that takes the time is the selection of um, of an object as opposed to the the effect that you want to apply so down here that little background, we just move in and add to that selection. Reduce the size of the brush right down and just select. That as well. Just 
just go around all the other areas and make sure normally the hair is a problem but it's not in this case okay we can clean things up a bit so once we've done the selection of the foreground object all we do is click on refine double check it we get this red matte area come through and we can refine that selection for example we want to tell that uh, editing tool that that is the background there a little bit through there so once we tell it that it will select it and there we go and we can just fine tune it a bit and then we want to put that selection on a new layer okay and then click apply we've done this before and i'll put a link in the video to you so you can see that okay so if we now go up you can see that's on a new background totally on its own and on the right hand side <coughs> in the layers panel excuse me if we turn the original on on again now you can see that there's been a bit of rogue selection around here uh, by the shoes and if you really want to be specific go to the erase brush and this is one of the ways of doing it uh, you can make a mask and um, use the black and white brush to uh, paint that out of course or to obstruct it and remember black blocks white reveals but in this case we can just isolate the foreground object using the layers on the right hand side and uh, nothing new there and just use the eraser brush and just erase out all these pixels that we don't want selected on that new layer okay now for the treatment I'm going to be doing to this image it's not critical that we do this accurately but of course if it was critical to your particular edit or your particular sensibilities or time frame that you have then by all means take just another five or ten minutes and do that really well okay you'll see in a moment what uh, when you saw that the beginning of the uh, of the piece the image was treated in a black and white manner command and zero just to increase it to its full size okay so now that that's been selected of course we can treat that in a whole manner of ways so first of all let's go to the adjustment layers and we'll go to black and white now because that adjustment layer is sat at the top of the layers pa panel it's made everything black and white but of course we don't want that so before we fine tune it if we just drag that adjustment layer remember if you drag it depending on where it goes and you can make it attached to or become a daughter layer of say the 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 cutout the selection which is what i've just done so that now has made the foreground um i.e me black and white but the background isn't but if i wanted to make the background um black and white then i can attach that adjustment layer to the background so now it's switched and that's the so if, if that's the image that you would prefer and you want to fine tune the black and white nature of it so you're in color and the, if that's more dramatic do that but if i wanted to do this then you would treat that and again to fine tune it then you would select the you know the different palette of your image the reds greens yellows cyans blues how they are converted to black and white and of course a lot of that is a personal preference depends on what colors are in the image okay once you've done that you can say that's done and of course if you wanted to put a make an adjustment to that background so we'll have another adjustment layer and uh, and maybe we'll have a hsl <coughs> excuse me hsl adjustment layer so we could maybe just increase the saturation of the background again we must make sure that adjustment layer is a daughter of the background only so it's not affecting the foreground um and yes of course we could really move the hue about if you wanted to do that 
um, but we don't want to do that. Just double clicking the um, sliders takes it back to its starting point. Um, so you don't have to worry about losing that position. So I'm just going to boost the colors a little bit. And uh, I am going to make another adjustment layer, layer uh, adjustment to the background and that's um, increase its contrast. So again, we'll go to uh, brightness and contrast. There it is. And it's not so much the brightness, it's just the contrast. I want to make it a bit more contrasty there. Okay. And of course, you do what you think is best. But it's about separating out the foreground from the background. Of course, you could apply a blur to the background if you wanted to. That's not something I want to do in this case. And, uh, and that's job done. So, you know, where we started from, which was here, to something where we've now got a better composition, um, done a selection, and then treated background and foreground differently. And of course, if we wanted to go a step further, and let's just go to that foreground object, click on the selection and move tool. If we wanted to, we could be a little bit overly dramatic and just increase the size or even flip it, reverse it. Um, but you'd have to be mindful of A, where the feet are positioned so they are appropriate, but also now that you've seen through some thin of the the background pixels so you'd have to go in and erase but by positioning it you can minimize how you how much you're going to erase because your foreground is hiding the background so yes you would have to go in and clone these areas and and um uh, and eliminate those okay but that's something you could try and do so I hope you found that useful and, uh, and interesting. A few little tips there uh, and tricks that you could use in your images. So it's good selection and a treatment of your foreground as opposed to your background or vice versa. And of course, always think about composition. How can you improve your composition after the fact just by a reasonable crop? Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.